Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to the third video in a massive video series I am doing on my insane trip to Singapore, and of course, doing Lego shopping while I was there. You might be wondering, why on earth does a single trip require four different videos to be published based on it? Well, you see, my experience Lego shopping at secondhand stores in Singapore was so legendary, I simply could not fit everything in one video. From having the Bionicle dream in real life, to touring a massive warehouse full of sealed Lego sets, and even going to a Lego museum and secondhand store, all of those I felt were different experiences that deserve their own video. And so, if you want to check out some of the videos I've already published, they are linked in the description below. My adventure throughout a store called Hobbyverse Singapore, which was probably the craziest used Lego store I've been to in the world. But Hobbyverse was just one out of the many, many used Lego stores I visited during my time in Singapore because the Lego market over there is unlike anything I've experienced in the world. It is absolutely insane just how many random secondhand shops they have selling old discontinued Lego. Even regular stores, like regular toy stores, had sets from years ago just casually on the shelves. And of course, there was a moment where I experienced the Bionicle dream walking into a store and seeing rows and rows of sealed Bionicle sets. That deserves a video to itself, and at the time I'm posting this, that video is not out yet. The reason for that is because I bought so much, I literally walked into the store and was like, Hi, can I buy your entire stock? That I had to ship all these sets home, and the sets haven't arrived yet. So I don't know when they're going to arrive. They are taking over two months now, so I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm hoping they get to me eventually, because otherwise that would be a very costly and tragic endeavor if they never actually end up at my house. But I want to actually wait to do like an unboxing at the end of that video, so the Bionicle Dream video will be published literally whenever they arrive at my house. I have no idea when. But as of right now, this is the third video in a four-part series summarizing my amazing trip to Singapore. First off, I want to do a major shout out to all of you who commented on the best places to visit. I essentially set out to Singapore with a plan in my head, a list of all the secondhand Lego stores that I could possibly find, and put out a video saying, hey, I'm going to Singapore next week, here's all the places I'm hitting, comment if I'm missing anything. And all of you commented Hobbyverse, which thank you so much for doing that. I would not have found it if people did not comment to go. And of course there were a lot of other locations as well, which I kind of stumbled upon, that were not even on my initial list. So this is a massive list, I think that I hit basically everything that I wanted to hit. I do also have an update, there are a couple of stores that actually say they're open on Google Maps that are not open, they don't exist anymore, that I spent hours just scouring for, so definitely want to talk about those. But overall, the experience shopping in Singapore was unlike anything that I've witnessed in the US and even overseas. Like, I had a crazy Lego shopping experience in Germany, if folks saw that video, that was a lot of fun last summer, and that doesn't even compare to this. I mean, this was on a different level. So let's check it out. I figured it makes sense to start off this video with just a little bit of context as to how this entire trip came to be. You see, my friend and I were looking for a bit of vacation from our jobs, so we took off a couple of weeks and went over to Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand for a chance to go on a cruise together and see all the sights. Now, I haven't been to Singapore since 2014, so it's been almost 10 years since my last visit, and I was so excited not only to see the sights, but of course, as always in any new city that I haven't explored in some time, I was very excited to see what the Lego shopping experience would be like in Singapore. So much so that I literally put out a video that asked you, the viewers, hey, I'm going to Singapore, do you have any recommendations on where I should go? Here's my plan, what am I missing? And oh my goodness, y'all delivered and y'all cooked, because this was probably the most unexpectedly crazy and insane Lego shopping trip I have ever gone on. And that includes Germany last year. I thought Germany was crazy. This was a different level. This was even crazier. And so because of that, I have literally split up many of my adventures in Singapore into four different videos. The first of which came out a few weeks ago where I put out videos on a specific store called Hobbyverse, which was an insane Lego store that I went to that was both a museum and a Lego store in one. They had a massive Lego warehouse and I spent hours and hours there. So if you want to see that place much more in depth, I definitely encourage you to check out those videos on Hobbyverse because 
I pretty comprehensively covered it. From a full tour of the entire store to what I did shopping in the warehouse, I got a chance to really go deep into what Hobbyverse is and how it is probably the coolest used LEGO store I've been to in my life so far. So that definitely deserved a spotlight on its own. I'm going to mention it briefly again when I go through the timeline of this video, but I do just want to note that that's coming. And in the future, I will be publishing a video where, spoiler alert, I literally had the Bionicle dream in real life where I walked into a toy store and found rows and rows of sealed Bionicle sets. Obviously, obviously that deserves a video of its own as to how that happened. I'm gonna mention it in this video, but really this video is talking about everything else where I went to literally dozens of locations selling Lego in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Thailand, also in Hong Kong during one of my layovers, and all of that, I figured, made sense to cover in this video, where I also kind of talk about the logistics of getting all this LEGO home. The packing, the shipping, all of that nonsense that comes with going on a trip overseas and trying to figure out how to transport LEGO back home. This is kind of the all-up LEGO Singapore shopping video, where I cover all of the different individual smaller toy stores and other experiences I had that maybe didn't deserve their own video, but made sense to put in a massive adventure video. But so... Let's take things from the top and start off with our very first location. So as we get into this, I should note that I actually had a pretty solid plan of all the locations I wanted to visit. I also went into this knowing full well that my typical strategy is making the plan, executing the plan, expecting the plan to go off the rails, and then throwing away the plan. So I was fully prepared to completely improvise, and the improvisation started when I was contacted by Nutbricks over on Instagram to come and tour Hobbyverse on the first day I arrived on a Tuesday. So. After taking my flight and arriving at the amazing Singapore airport, which I think is probably the best airport in the world, yes, this is a photo inside the airport itself, there was a very quick stop at a WH Smith, which actually surprisingly had some LEGO items that I didn't own yet. Specifically, they actually had LEGO magazines, which are typically exclusive to Europe. I have never found them in Asia before this point, but I guess due to the colonization and maybe that this was an international airport, they did actually sell some of the exclusive Lego magazines, which you can normally only find in like Germany, France, and the UK. So I definitely wanted to pick those up. Really nice to get the Oni Garmadon figure for only around six US dollars, so that was fantastic. And it was also really cool seeing some Lego sets being sold at the airport itself, although there wasn't really anything I didn't own other than an array of keychains from 2012 onwards. Some very discontinued keychains here, which was really cool to see in person. But I honestly didn't really need to pick anything up. It was cool seeing all this old LEGO merch, but nothing I didn't really particularly need for my collection. And of course, after arriving at the hotel, I was ready to go. But there was one problem. I actually had to work today. So let's hear from me and see what my experience was just arriving right then and there. So I'm staying in one of my favorite hotels to stay in when I visit Singapore, which is the Intercontinental Hotel, which is absolutely fantastic. But pretty tragically, I've just spent the past several hours just working. I do work another job other than YouTube, and I am currently working in uh, kind of the Asian time zone. So I've literally been sitting in my hotel working. I am dying to get out there to go to Singapore, but I got to finish up some work meetings. As soon as I am finished up with those, I'm going to go out to the number one first destination. At 3 p.m., I have a tour of what everybody has been telling me in the comments on Discord to go to this one location that I did not even know existed. I'm so excited. So we're going to fast forward a bit to that. I'm going to go grab some food quickly, and then I'm going to head on over. On my quest to find some food before going over to Hobbyverse, I actually was able to stumble upon Bricks and Ocean, which is located in Raffle City Shopping Center within walking distance to my hotel, which I specifically wanted to check out because I saw they actually had an array of discontinued LEGO sets, including this DC set from 2016, one of the Rathtar Escape sets, but unfortunately, the prices were really not that great. And especially compared to a lot of the other stories you'll see on this list, there's a reason why some of these sets have not been bought in years, and that's because they're just so expensive compared to the actual standard retail price, or even the Brickling sealed price for these sets, despite how discontinued they are, it's still really, really expensive. Now do keep in mind this is Singaporean dollars, so it's not like $200 for the resistance troop transport, it's probably close to $150 US, and maybe closer to like $100 for the DC set, but still, even though that the prices were in Singaporean dollars, it was still really crazy high. 
But, I mean, given that this was the first store I went to and I was already seeing long discontinued LEGO sets, the prospects for what lay ahead were very promising. So of course, after stopping for a quick lunch over at Pepper Kitchen, I used to love eating this pepper steak when I went in 2014. I had so many fond memories, so I absolutely had to have that as my first meal in Singapore. I went over to Hobbyverse Singapore. Now Hobbyverse Singapore has received two separate videos already, so I'm gonna spend basically no time on it on this video. If you wanna see Hobbyverse up close, check it out linked in the description below. I've posted my two videos already, but essentially Hobbyverse was a two-part Lego museum, a full mock display center, as well as probably the craziest sealed vintage Lego shopping experience I have ever had in my life, with a massive warehouse full of sealed Lego sets from all prior years, ranging from sets from the 1990s to all the way up to today. That was probably the craziest time at Hobbyverse. I spent my entire day there. Big shout out to Nutbricks and the entire crew at Hobbyverse for showing me around, opening up the store, and even sharing a fantastic meal with me at the end. And by the time I got back to my hotel, I realized I had to actually figure out how to take all this home. So let's see that right now. So I have not been in Singapore for more than a few hours and my extra luggage is already looking pretty full of lego so i still got a pack of this set i mean this is going to be easy it's just the marvel collectible minifigs as well as the duplicates i wanted plus the extra that i'm going to auction off on whatnot but like this whole area of the suitcase is filled already it's got the uh, panama canal underneath there it's got the advent calendar heroica this is barely even gonna that's actually sticking up i don't think that's gonna close i still need to pack this stuff and obviously i'm taking these out so they don't get wrinkled so i'm gonna pack these separately but i genuinely think this means i cannot make any more lego purchases this trip narrator chiming in here that was not true and i've been to one out of the like 12 locations i wanted to go to now that being said this has been said to be the best one i have been told that this is really the only one worth going to. Narrator chiming in again. If only that were the case, then I would not have so many logistics problems you're about to discover in this video. So, this is really the only potential thing that could work, but I may not find anything else to buy. If I do, I'm kind of out of luck, because I don't have room, and this is full of clothing. Well, if there's one thing I've learned while shopping for LEGO overseas, if there's a will, there's a way. More room can always be found, and you're about to see that later on in this video. But of course, I did want to take some time to sightsee as well. Got a chance to go around the Singapore Country Club the next day and have a great meal with some of my relatives, including some delicious duck. Check out my food channel, Food Bricks, where I'll be ranking all six different kinds of duck that I tried in Singapore. I love duck. I mean, I love eating duck. I love being a duck. So obviously, would recommend it. But but of course, after this amazing tour going around Singapore and kind of experiencing the food culture and getting a chance to see Little India and Chinatown and just having a blast exploring the city itself, it was soon time to go to the next location. So I basically took the entire day to tour around. It was kind of a weekend, I believe, so it was really nice to be able to just explore the sights and just see around the city itself. Didn't really do anything LEGO related during most of the day until later on in the late afternoon because for my final destination i figured you know what i'm just gonna check out some random other lego store and again as you heard me say in that initial video i literally wasn't expecting much everyone was saying to go to hobbyverse nobody was saying to go anywhere else so i was like okay I went to the best one, I probably won't buy anything else on this trip, so I'm just gonna check it out for the video and like, yeah, so I can say in the video, hey, I went to this place, didn't really find anything, but here it is. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, uh, you bet I was wrong. See, the thing I did not count was that I don't think people are huge Bionicle fans in Singapore, or may maybe there are, but at the very least, the presence of Bionicle fans was not super, super strong to me, at least from people that I talked to. So these sets that you're about to see, I'm pretty sure were just sitting on shelves for, for who knows how long, waiting for me to arrive and claim my prize. So here's a bit of a sneak peek in terms of what you're about to see, but let's go on over and check out this insane store. So this is Secret Chamber. It is located in the Thompson Plaza shopping mall. And from what I researched online, 
This was basically one of the coolest locations to be able to find LEGO at, having a range of all sorts of sets from throughout the many years of LEGO's history. What I did not expect to find though, <laughs> was this. Yes, for the Bionicle fans in the audience, these are fully sealed. These are a good bit cheaper than Bricklink, not like a lot cheaper, but a good bit cheaper for sealed Bionicle sets. Every single canister was priced at around $60 to $70, except for Mata Nui. That one was like $100, which I guess they sort of knew what they were doing with that one. But this was just literally the Bionicle dream come true. And I'll be putting out a separate video on this, probably not until November, I'm guessing. What you're about to find out in this video is that I actually had to ship all of these home. So I am still waiting for these to come home. They are estimated to arrive near the end of October. I really want to do an unboxing of my packages in conjunction with this video. So I will be doing a fully separate video on having the Bionicle dream in real life. So I'm going to just kind of blast through this in this video. But Bionicle was not the only thing in this store. No, no, no. Because this actually had troves and troves of sealed LEGO sets from pretty much every LEGO theme out there. While Hobbyverse focused a lot on LEGO Star Wars, I mean, Hobbyverse had a lot of other stuff as well, but there was a big emphasis on Star Wars. This was a little bit more holistic and seemed to focus a bit more on original LEGO themes, having a strange and eclectic mix of mostly sealed sets, but also some random used LEGO sets as well, individual minifigures, and sets from across LEGO's entire product range and portfolio, which was so, so cool to actually see in person. Going around the store itself, you can just see a collection of pretty much just random sealed LEGO sets. Of course, more Bionicle system sets here as well. There were kind of two separate Bionicle areas on shelves. That was just how many they had. But it was really interesting seeing these sets actually be fully shrink-wrapped. All of them were in literally mint condition. It did not look like these had been touched since the day that they came on shelves. I don't know what the story is behind this, I guess they've just kept these throughout the many years of them in existence. I really do not know what to make of this, but as you can see, this was unlike anything I've ever witnessed because the discontinued sets were shrink-wrapped, sealed, and I basically went crazy at the store. I essentially went up to the cashier and was like, I would like your entire stock. Unfortunately, they were unwilling to give me a discount despite spending like 5,000 Singaporean dollars at this store, which equated to around 4,000 US dollars. I really did try to ask, I was like, hey, if I'm spending so much, is there any chance I can get a discount? And they were like, no, just just buy, buy the stuff. Clearly, like, I think they saw how excited I was and they were like, no, nah, like, this guy's gonna get it anyway, even if we don't give him a discount, which like, honestly, fair, understandable, have a nice day. And... I just went insane because here's the Ninjago section. You can see they had a collection of sealed Ninjago sets from 2011, 2012, all the way upwards to the more modern era of Ninjago. But as you can see, phenomenal condition. I got the Lightning Dragon. I think that was the only Ninjago set I actually got from the store. So the rest of these, at least as the time of recording this video, are still there and priced somewhat fairly according to Bricklink prices. I really had to prioritize because, again, luggage space was super tight. As much as I wanted to be able to bring all of these back and be able to actually sell them and give them back to the community as giveaways, I really had to pick and choose on what I actually was able to bring back, and I figured Bionicle canisters are a little bit easier to kind of throw in my luggage than boxed Ninjago sets which could potentially get crushed. But it was so cool just seeing the sheer variety and array of different sets they had available. I mean, oh my goodness, look at all these Tournament of Elements sets from 2015. Just imagine you're me and you're walking into a LEGO store and they just have these sealed sets for sale. Cheaper than Bricklink. Like, that was nuts. I genuinely do not know what to make of this. And I could just keep on going on, but you could just see the clips speak for themselves because... This was just the craziest array of sealed LEGO sets I have ever seen. But it wasn't just sealed LEGO sets. No, no, because they actually had a lot of used LEGO items as well. And I did actually manage to go through and get a ton of used LEGO items, at least in terms of stuff I didn't own yet. You've got some LEGO Movie 2 hidden inside. Of course, those are a little bit more recent. But then there's just random other sealed discontinued sets scattered throughout as well. So a whole eclectic range pretty much just organized by theme. And the strangest thing was that they had these models clearly from Legoland. Like, that knight is from the dragon roller coaster in Legoland. How did they get that? Like, how on earth did they get that? I genuinely have no idea how that actually was transported into the store. 
maybe Legoland was refreshing their displays and an employee at Legoland sold it is my only explanation, but just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff here. Of course, so great to see some sealed LEGO Elves sets. Elves is one of the most underrated LEGO themes, in my opinion, and again, pretty much every LEGO theme was covered here. From the most obscure to the most modern, they had some of everything. Now, what I did manage to get were a couple copies of LEGO Games sets that I didn't own already. I am trying to collect all of the LEGO board game sets, so I really wanted to pick those up. But it was really cool seeing some of the oldest sets here as well, like some Knights Kingdom 2 sets. There was a Discovery Channel set that I really wanted to get, but unfortunately, the price was a little bit too much for me, especially because I pretty much only collect things used. If I buy something sealed, I will open it and I will throw out the box. I don't collect LEGO boxes, I open every set that I do not own, so collecting sealed sets is kind of useless to me. As cool as it was to see so many sealed sets, I felt like it would almost be wasting it for me to buy them and then just open the boxes and probably pay double or triple what the set normally costs on Bricklink used just to kind of throw them out later on. So. I decided, you know what, I'm going to leave the sealed sets here for somebody who's going to appreciate them a lot more than me. Took home some of the Bionicle sets, of course, to give back to the community and to resell at very good prices. But yeah, you can see these are the Singaporean dollar prices here. Honestly, not awful prices compared to Bricklink. And again, I don't collect sealed sets, but if I did, oh boy, that's the set with the goat in it, of course. The goat is returning next year, but still so cool to see the Mill Village raid here. How much was that? Let's see, oh my, I don't even know how much, I think that was like 600 Singaporean dollars, so like 500 US dollars sealed. Let me see, yep, yep, 600 right there, I remembered it from the trip, but yeah, look at that goat, oh my goodness, just sitting there in mid condition sealed. We have the Medieval Market Village from Lego Castle as well, you've got some Pirates of the Caribbean sets. I could go on and on, I mean, just the amount of footage I captured at the store was just insane, because... This to me was on par with Hobbyverse in terms of just the sheer quantity of weird sealed Lego sets that I never expected to see ever again. They even had Ninjago Spinners, which I believe were retailing for only around $20 to $30 each sealed, which was actually a pretty good price. I didn't really have a need to get them, but that was really nice. And of course, they even had alarm clocks, they had all sorts of different advent calendars, Ninjago Air Jitsu Spinners from 2015, fully sealed in perfect condition, haven't seen those in a while in such good condition, and overall, what a crazy store. And I would highly recommend, if anybody is in Singapore, Go check this store out. It is kind of bonkers just how much stuff they had for sale here. Really cool to see Pharaoh's Quest stuff, to see some construction stuff, of course all the Ninjago stuff, and I wish I could have gotten more. In fact, let's take a look at how much I actually got from the store right now. So yeah, this pile of sets here those were all the sets that I purchased. These were not the ones on shelves. Like, I, I bought all of these sets. Oh, I forgot I got the Skull Truck and the Snake Crane as well from Ninjago. But as you can see, beyond that, these Bionicle sets were the ones that I left. I did manage to leave a lot of Bionicle sets because... No matter how tempting it was to take them all, I did want to leave some of them in store, so a lot of the box sets are still there. I left a ton of canisters as well, like you can see Paraka, some of the Baraki, the Toa and Nika, and of course I also left all the ones from 2005 because I felt like those were the oldest and rarest and I wanted to leave those there for someone else, and all the Matoran as well, so I did manage to leave a lot. But I did buy a lot as well, so these are my massive bags, and yeah, I was starting to realize that... I was going to have to pull something out of somewhere, like I don't even know what I was going to do to bring this home. You can see the cashier just ringing up every single one, one by one, as I'm just sitting here filming, and that was the entirety of the haul from the store. I will be unboxing the haul in my video coming up about the Bionicle Dream in real life, so if you want to see me actually do the full unboxing and unpacking of every single set I got, definitely stay tuned for that coming in probably November when the sets actually arrive. But of course, I did also want to take a quick look to highlight some of the sets they did have on the display windows of the store itself. These were on the outside of the store, but everything was for sale, which was really cool. They were behind glass, but I did manage to pick up a couple of unique items. They had some sealed Star Wars poly bags of some rare stuff, even a Lego movie poly bag, and just weird random sets. Look at that army of Velikas, just specifically like six Velikas. I don't know what to make of that. I genuinely do not know. I managed to get that Lego Batman game set in the back there. They also had Toa Iruni sealed, but he was like 120 US dollars, so I decided to pass up on that one. But 
it was still pretty crazy just to see the sheer amount of random Lego obscure items featured in the store itself. They had a complete collection of the original Lego Harry Potter wave of minifigures, which was super cool. So that was one side of the store. Again, this was Secret Chamber in Thompson Plaza. But then going on to the other side, they had all sorts of other stuff like the Darth Maul bust. They had the maquettes of Luke Skywalker from, I believe, some of the holiday stuff. They, of course, had one of the OG Lego Star Wars battle packs there, which I did see a ton of in Hobbyverse the day before, so maybe it was a little less impressive to see that but still really cool to see just a crazy assortment of lego items on display and then of course it came time to actually figure out how on earth i was getting these not just back home but back to my hotel so what i did was i basically just took these two gigantic lego bags and dragged them over to the taxi pickup stand called myself a grab which is basically singapore's version of uber and showed up and was like hey i need to like load these bags into your car and i'm going back to the intercontinental hotel don't ask any questions i just let me cook you know what let me cook i'll take your entire stock so there I was, standing in the mall, I was barely managing to contain my excitement, as you can see from this video, just with the bags beneath me. Here's Here I am on the car ride back to my hotel, it was like a 30 minute car ride, they were sitting in the car, I was taking care of the Bionicle canisters, and before I knew it, I made it back to the hotel, and then had to figure out how on earth to pack these. I'm going to go much more in-depth on how I actually managed to pack these in my Bionicle video going through this coming out in November, but let's see some clips of me right now. <laughs> what have I done? What, <laughs> what have I done? The, the reality of the decisions I've just made in the past couple of hours are just starting to hit me because I've got not just one but two gigantic bags filled with mostly sealed Lego Bionicle sets some Ninjago stuff and some stuff for myself like for my own collection but I don't know how I'm gonna get this home because yesterday I just filled up my one suitcase I brought an empty suitcase for Lego purchases with Lego and it's full like this is it's it's full so so we are we are gonna have some fun and now we actually have to figure out how on earth to get these home but first why don't we do some unboxing I didn't actually bring a tripod because again I didn't think I was gonna be filming anything I didn't I honestly I did not think I was gonna buy any Lego this trip this trip I saw the prices online and I was like, nope, I'm good. I'm not buying anything. Um, well, that was a lie. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Now this full unboxing, I will actually publish this footage when I put out that Bionicle Dream video in like two months. But here you can see a sped up version of literally just unwrapping every single item from the bags. I talked through my purchases and I guess for now, for this video, I'm gonna focus on the non-Bionicle stuff because Obviously, the Bionicle stuff is the focus of that video, but I also got a lot of non-Bionicle stuff as well. So, as I work my way through the Bionicle stuff, we're going to talk about those in the future video, but let's actually take a quick look at some of the other random stuff I got for both resale and for myself. Because I got some shield and doggo as well. So, we've got... Holy moly, I need to check the receipt to make sure I got everything because there's like a good chance I just left something in the store. Um, sealed Fangpire Wrecking Ball from 2012. This is so cool to see this. Fully sealed from Ninjago. Honestly, giving me a ton of nostalgia from the past. Uh, then we have a sealed Skull Truck from 2011. This is from one of the earlier Ninjago year, actually the first year of Ninjago. And then we have probably the rarest, or one of the rarest sets here. Now this was 500 Singaporean dollars, but this was the Lightning Dragon Battle. In the US, this was exclusive to Toys R Us, and it is one of the rarest Ninjago sets ever. JDX by himself sells for like 70 US dollars. I mean, so this is one of the rarest sets that I was able to get. And I mean, this is probably what I'm gonna be auctioning, or at least selling for some, or giving away. Uh, I'll do some giveaways. I will also have some as contest prizes for fan interviews, at least for the Bionicle sets. So I really need to get home and just figure out what I'm going to do as giveaways and as prizes and whatnot and whatnot, whatnot and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, some of these will be going on auction. Uh, but now it's time to look at the stuff I actually got 
for myself, uh, because I didn't want to get some stuff for myself, I got the sealed uh, Lego Batman board game from Lego Games. This cost me around 90 US dollars, which is pretty high. It's basically Bricklink average price for new and sealed. So 90 bucks, I figured why not? Uh, I got a ton of games actually. These were 35 Singaporean dollars. So that's like 25 US dollars. Uh, UFO attack game sealed sunblock game i i'm really curious about all these lego games so i wanted to get them and uh coco rico i have no idea what that's about but seal um also got a ninjago set i didn't own yet this is the only ninjago set i didn't own which was a junior's snake showdown i owned the exclusive snake and i owned the bike but i didn't own kai's car from it so i figured why not get the last ninjago set to complete my collection um oh this is cool a sealed Lego Island Extreme Stunt Set. This I wanted to get from the other store I went to yesterday, but they wouldn't be they weren't able to sell it to me because they were kind of the, the owner's personal collection, so I'm glad to actually find one here. This is super interesting. Click its jewelry. This is from what is this from? 2005. Uh, this cost me only like four bucks. I probably should have got another one, honestly. Like, it's so interesting to see a Click It set fully sealed. So I said, why not? Uh, the only Bionicle set I got for myself was the Squid Ammo Battle Pack. I just think that's kind of funny to have like, I don't know, an extra sealed copy of. Weird color of squids. And then I got a ton of poly bags. I got this Lego Movie 2 poly bag. I got a uh, Hidden Side poly bag. Let's see, I got a Singaporean exclusive uh, Pagoda poly bags. So that's really cool to see that. Um, what else did I get here? I feel like I got more, but maybe not. Okay, so I guess not. Um, I got a couple of Ninjago magazines. So these were, these are actually 18 Singaporean dollars. These are pretty high, but good minifigs, season nine hunted, uh, Iron Baron, good to get him as a magazine gift. So that's really cool. Uh, and then I got some Blocks magazines. They had a ton, but the Blocks magazines were 16 Singaporean dollars. So they were a little bit expensive. I only got three. I got this Lego Movie 2 one because I was hoping they would show some behind the scenes stuff. We'll see. I got this Ninjago one reviewing the entire Ninjago theme. And this one was a magazine that came out with an exclusive Bionicle designer interview about the end of G2. So really interested in reading through that. But yeah, so far that was my haul. So basically I know all the stuff that I got for myself totaled at around 400 US dollars. Um, so it was like this, the Batman game, honestly probably overpaid a little bit for my own personal stuff, but you know, I wanted to support this like really awesome store. So I was like, why not? I'm gonna get, oh yeah, 400 for this. That does not feel like good value to me. Hmm, okay. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Clearly I won some for all the other sets. So like, I can't even complain that much. But yeah, ton of magazines, ton of game stuff for myself, just obscure Lego items. But then we get to the really interesting stuff, which is the Bionicle sets. And I don't think I'm keeping any of, cause like, it doesn't make sense. Cause I already own these. Um, and I feel like I want other people to be able to appreciate them. Clearly people were not going to that store and buying up Bionicle if they've had these Bionicle sets for years. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna get a ton and I don't think I'm gonna make that much money because I'm going to at least start the auction by around what I paid for them. I'm gonna factor in how much it will take me to, I don't know, ship these back. I, I don't know how I'm gonna bring these back. I buy another luggage and then pay the extra luggage fee for a third luggage to bring, I don't know. I, 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 you'll, by the end of this video, you will know what I figure out. I, I do not know at the time I'm recording this. Um, but I, I want other people to be able to experience Bionicle sets new and sealed out of the box. I mean, I didn't even have that experience myself for most of these, so definitely going to be auctioning off a lot of these. And of course, contest prizes as well, because these are going to make some amazing contest prizes. I've already gotten a couple DMs of people who've wanted to reserve some items, so I know some of these are reserved from when I posted on my story, but... Oh my goodness, this is pretty nuts, and yeah, stay tuned for when I actually do an auction on these, because this is crazy. So this is it. This is the entirety of my haul so far. I have been to basically two locations out of the 12 I was intending to go to. I now will probably no longer go to all 12. This video is shaping up to be very, very different than I intended, because first of all, I thought that this was going to be a standard run-of-the-mill, hey, I went to Singapore, went to 12 different Lego places, and bought, like, a set from each of them. Um, but no, I've been to two places, and two was clearly enough. So, 
I still don't know how I'm bringing this home. I, I'm genuinely, like, it's starting to sink in for me. I think earlier on in this video, what you saw was, like, me at my peak excitement, being incredibly hyped and, like, crazed out of my mind over finding this stuff. And now it's, like, it's, like, 10 p.m. I've got work calls coming up because I have to work through the night because I'm working in a Pacific time zone. Um... And, and the sobering realization of the choices I've made is starting to, like, really set in more than it was before. I definitely will need to ship. Like, I'm not carrying this onto my cruise ship and then carrying it back home. So I need to ship these. How? I do not know. I genuinely don't know. I do have some relatives here, so I will be asking them their tips on shipping. I do have a lot of friends and fans here that I've now made uh, new friends who maybe can give me some tips as well. Uh, but what I probably will do is I will pack the rarest and, like, the items that, like, if I lost everything, would, how, how, like, badly would I feel? So I'd probably, like, pack this in my suitcase because I don't want to ship that. I mean, shipping should be fine, but I'm just kind of paranoid that, like, the shipment gets lost and I just lose all of this. So I need to pack that. And I also want to pack my stuff, like the stuff that I got for myself, like this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, that's mine. Pretty much everything in the bag, like this is all mine on the floor here. Uh, the Lego games are mine as well as these, like I got these for my own collection um, and the Marvel minifigs. So I might pack just my own stuff and we're gonna like play a little roulette and ship home the stuff that I'm actually going to like sell <laughs> and just see, I guess, I guess we'll see if I can get lucky. And I have shipped home a ton of Lego before, uh, specifically from Germany. The last time I did something as bonkers as this was Germany last year, but even then I don't think it was quite to this extent. Cause that was a lot of used sets. And while it was a lot, they were all used. So having the boxes be dented up wasn't that big of a deal. The thing is though, I can't let these boxes get dented up because I'm like selling them. So that raises quite a peculiar problem of shipping. I will probably have to pay a lot extra for padding and to pack these. This, this will become like an all day endeavor to figure out how to ship, which is kind of sad because I have limited days in Singapore and I actually wanted to like do stuff and not just have my entire trip be Lego focused as it's very quickly turning out to be. Um, today was good sightseeing for like half the day until I, I got sidetracked by this, but yeah, wish me luck, everyone. I still genuinely cannot believe, like, what's behind me right now. Like, this is... I feel like that scene in Breaking Bad when Hewell, like, lays down on the blocks of money. It's, it's like, it's like this, except this isn't, like, free. Like, I just spent a block of money to get this. But I, I have that same feeling. Like, if I was, if I wasn't worried about crushing the boxes, I would, I would lay down and, like, swim in this pile of Bionicle. But... Yeah, this is pretty nuts. I, again, have no idea at all how I'm going to bring this home. Uh, genuinely do not know. Um, other than shipping, 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 I, I guess just packing them really well. So I did empty out my suitcase. I brought an extra suitcase, so I've got one suitcase full of clothes, and I have one suitcase that's kind of empty right now that I can use to pack Lego. Previously, everything I bought yesterday filled that suitcase. So that was the uh, the Lego Education Panama Canal. That was the Belleville Advent Calendar, uh, the Chima set, Heroica, and like all of this little stuff. So like all the little stuff here was in that bag and that filled up the suitcase. Here's the thing. I do not care about the box for most of the stuff that I'm keeping. I wanna keep, the Belleville Advent Calendar unfortunately is clunky, but I do wanna open that as an Advent Calendar. So like I kind of have to keep that one sealed. Heroica is open, Chima's sealed, but I can open it. And what I'll probably do is, while well, I do want to keep the boxes of the game sets, because that is my way of storing the games, I can probably like fit all these random poly bags in those boxes. I think there'll be extra space. So I'm going to space optimize those. I'm also going to open up the Panama Canal set and space optimize the box. Like I'm just going to shove all these other bags into it. And that should free up a good amount of room. And... At the very least, it will allow me to store some of the rarest sets. Like, I, I want Lezovic to be stored, for sure. Uh, Maxilos and Spinax stored, for sure. 
I don't think the Lightning Dragon is gonna fit in my suitcase, just looking at the size of that box. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe it will. It's kind of the same size as the education box, maybe. If I can carry that myself, I will, because that's really, really specialized. And then I think the rest I'm just gonna have to ship. And I'm gonna pack literally physically as much as I can in my suitcase and ship everything else. Okay, I think it's time to do what I can to pack these up. I have built the poly bags that I could because I think that that would save me a little bit of space. And everything else I am going to try to just package my own stuff and then get to the stuff that I'm going to be reselling later on. So I want to start off by seeing what I can do to optimize the space inside the Lego education box here for the Panama Canal. Because opening this up, I'm going to be honest, there's less space inside than I thought. Usually Lego boxes have like a ton of extra space. This doesn't really but I think we can make it work. So I'm gonna take the instruction manual out because I don't wanna get anything damaged. And we're gonna see what we can do to just get this filled up with random other Lego stuff. So I'm gonna start off with these other bags. Although, do I wanna have the bags in here or maybe other boxes? Because if I wanna protect some of the boxes I've gotten, then maybe I put them inside of this and just make it kind of a super box. Okay, well we can try, we can try that. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these Lego game sets, which I do wanna keep relatively intact. Or maybe what we do is we just like take less of it and put them in. I think that actually makes a lot more sense to me. And I'm gonna use these other bags as almost like padding, right? Like this is almost like padding for less of it, where it's gonna, gonna keep the box really tightly in there and nice and secure. I think that makes the most sense. And let's see if we can make this work. Oh, I, is our Lego pieces going to scratch? Actually, I don't know. I think I think it's fine. Um, yeah, so we're going to just make sure that this is really nicely padded in there. So we've got no damage to be done, especially this box. This is a really special one. So again, I'm going to fit in really as, just as much as I can, honestly and see what we can do. I also take this little Bionicle box that kind of fits perfectly in here to keep that sealed. Again, really space optimizing this. Like we are crazily space optimizing this just to make sure everything will fit. I mean, that looks like everything I can squeeze in. I might be able to squeeze in some of these like Marvel minifigure packs. Yeah, I think, I think some of these will fit in here. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be really tight. But, okay, so got some Marvel minifigs in there to really just add on to the effect of being able to add stuff in. Okay, and the click it set. I'll put the click it's one in here as well. Okay, so Panama Canal box is like, that's, that is kind of bulging now. Like that, I don't think I can fit anything else in here. I'm gonna get my suitcase and put this inside and There's actually not as much room in my suitcase as it may seem. It's a big case, but it doesn't have a lot of, I mean, it needs to close is the issue. And it needs to fully close and you can't really compress things, otherwise you're gonna crush stuff. So, I take my suitcase here and we are going to get this strap ready see what I can do to pack this in. So I've got a large space in this suitcase. So I'm gonna take the newly fully filled Emma Canal box, put that in. Okay, that's that's pretty tight. That's, that's in there pretty securely. And there's some wiggle room, but that's fine. I'm gonna take the other sets that are like mine, like the game sets and put them in here because I did want to keep the game sets in good condition because I will use these boxes to store my own stuff. Uh, to store the games themselves. So absolutely want to do this in good condition. Uh, and then I also have these other boxes that I really want to make sure get back to me nicely. So, oh my goodness, this is going to be... I mean, I'm already... 
This is already almost full. Like this, that alone almost, <laughs> it almost filled this up. That's kind of sad. Um, okay, yeah, we are gonna pack as much as we can and then just figure out from there, I think, because it's, it's pretty ridiculous, the amount of stuff that I have to bring home. Okay, so I'm packing up stuff here. Let me go ahead and bring our camera a little bit closer so you can kind of see how I'm packing stuff like so. That might give you a bit of an idea on my plan here of how I'm gonna fit everything in, at least all of my stuff in. So, okay, kind of like, it's just like Tetris, right? It's just uh, tessellating different things in and out. Um, this is also my, I don't need the box for this. I do not need the box for this junior set. I'm actually gonna open that up right now because I could care less about the box for this, so. That's one thing off my plate where I just can throw out this box. Fantastic. Now, the question is, how much can fit inside this Heroica box? And the answer is probably a good amount. I'm fair, yeah, like this, this is just like loose, okay, yeah, we can definitely fit stuff in here. We, if we were really smart about stuff, we could fit a lot of stuff in here if I was really smart. Okay, so I'm gonna try to like break up the Lego pieces because I'm gonna wash all this anyway, so it doesn't really matter if the pieces are broken up. And we are going to fit in definitely this Ninjago set. So that's done. Um, can I fit this entire island box in here? I think so. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, fantastic. Um, oh, and maybe I can just use this box to hold all my loose stuff, like all the Marvel minifigures can go in here. Yeah, this looks this looks good to me. And okay, so the Marvel minifigures, like they're gonna get broken up and stuff, but whatever, that's fine. Uh, not a, not a huge deal because I will just repair them when I get home. So that's totally fine. So. This should cover all my loose items, which is really great because I don't want loose Lego pieces scattered around. So that should cover all the loose items I just made myself. I bet I could fit in like, I bet I could fit in some more stuff. I don't know what that would be, but okay, I'm gonna get the Scooby-Doo manuals and also put that in here. So it's flattened. Um, okay, that's great. So that's the Heroica box, but this will not fit inside this side of the suitcase. So I need to start using this side, which is getting into a bit of a dangerous territory there. Now, I bet I can do the same with the Chiba one. Now, if I open this up, I'm gonna open this up carefully because I do wanna, again, keep this box. So I'm gonna try to open this up. Oh, that's gonna rip it. Okay, hmm. Um, I don't actually have scissors with me or anything because I did not pack any of this. Can I use my nails? Mm, maybe not, okay. Hmm, I mean, how full do I, nah, this can, fit, this can fit more. This can fit more. I need like keys, but it'll fit more. Okay, when in doubt, use an iPhone charger cable. Fantastic, so this box can be open. Oh yeah, that's a low, oh, yeah. we have a lot of space. Okay, so I can at least put in, I would assume, like some of the Marvel minifigures, I think. Yeah, like I can fit in some of these in here. Can we fit in one more? The goal would be to fit in like one more plastic bag. Because, I mean, I do have some more here. So I flattened out. I can make this work, just squeeze the air out of this bag. I'm really like, I'm getting desperate. I am really trying to like space optimize this to the wazoo because anything I don't need to ship is ideal, right? Like I don't want to have to ship anything. Um, I mean, I will, but I don't want to have to ship any of my stuff for sure because I don't want, not that I expect anything to get lost, but I, I don't want any of my stuff to get lost in particular. It's one thing if I lose stuff that I already own where it's like, oh, too bad, so sad. But no, I, I really don't want to lose stuff that like I don't actually own. Uh, can I make, oh, can I make this squeeze? Can I make this fit? That is gonna be tight. 
I think we can make it fit. I think, yeah, oh man, that's a tight fit. Okay, yeah, so we made that fit. Okay, these other game sets, I don't, I don't know. Uh, whew. Man, okay, well I think that in the, the empty space here, wait, hold on, before that, I'm going to squeeze stuff underneath here. Yeah, we are gonna go crazy with this, squeezing in literally underneath these sets, uh, because I am very desperate to scope this space. Pretty sure that some of these bags are gonna open, but that's fine. Okay, so that's that's squeezed in. Fantastic. And maybe I can just squeeze in the rest of this set in here on the side of the luggage itself. So I better not find any more like I cannot buy any more like I I literally like this is it. This is it. This is all the Lego I can buy for this trip. I mean, although I've already blown past the limit, so technically I could just ship home more, but that should not be an invitation to myself to buy more because we are we are already at our wits end here when it comes to Lego. Definitely packing that with me. Um, and I guess these mag well, these magazines are gonna kill my weight, really. I should really ship the magazines if I was smart about it because that will kill the weight. Maybe I'll ship these ones. Like, I'll probably ship those. Um, and I'll prioritize, like, I do want to, I don't want to ship these. Like, I want to carry these home. So maybe I ship home these magazines, and then these I actually make sure we, we hand carry. Okay. I don't think I'm fitting any more into this. Like, this, I guess. But no, I don't think anything else is going here. Maybe some of the Marvel little figures. So I was actually more space efficient than I was previously. Okay, that's good to know. So like when I packed this last night, I guess I wasn't so desperate to because all of this fit in like both sections. And now it's fitting into one, so that's great. Oh shoot, I didn't grab the strap. Oh man, did not grab the strap for my suitcase, which is now just buried underneath stuff. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Come on. We are gonna pull this. Yep, okay, fantastic. I do, I love and hate Ramoas. Like, I, I, I only get Ramoa suitcases and I like them for the most part, but sometimes they are, they are tough to work with. Okay, so that's one side that's like full. The question now becomes, how many Bionicle sets can I fit in this section? Or more specifically, which rare sets should I fit in that section? Um, and I think the answer is Maxillos and Spinax. Definitely like carrying this myself. Um, it's like, it's so much wasted space in the box though. It's like almost, it almost is a shame to pack this in my suitcase, which should be space optimized. I don't know, like, I, hmm. I mean, are there any smaller Bionicle boxes? Cause like, I also need to pack my game stuff. Uh, like the Lego Batman game here. Oh, is that gonna, that's gonna be a squeeze if it's double stacked. I mean, maybe I can get away with double stacking? Maybe, maybe. That would be nice. That would be a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Oh, and I still have the Scooby-Doo set. I complete, well, this can like squeeze in anyway. Okay, yeah, like that can squeeze in anyway. That's like, this is fine. Um, maybe what I do then is like, I take like Nocturne. Yeah, I can take Nocturne and I can take like one more. I can take like one of the Gadunkas, maybe the one that's not shrink wrapped. So, because the shrink wrap one will be fine on its own. And, I mean, now I have like an awkward shaped space that I could fit more stuff into, but I don't have more stuff. That is not an invitation for me to buy more, but it is simply a statement that I, I could fit more stuff here, but everything here is too big to fit there, right? Like I can't fit anything here in this space. Um, Toa Mari, uh, Mari Kongu, no, that's not, that's not gonna fit in there. Huh, okay, well, no, no, now we just need to redistribute. We need to think 
think smarter and start redistributing this stuff that I packed in here into this corner because the loose Lego bags can be resilient and pack into any corner, but the other stuff is not. So, yeah, like that. Okay, okay, okay. So now, what I think we can do is actually pack a few Bionicle canisters into here if we are very, very smart about space optimization. Oh my goodness, we are... We are pushing the limits of compression. Okay, I think I think that's it. Like maybe I could fit some of the Marvel superhero minifigures, but this is gonna be really tight. Okay, so that that goes over this. And now we do have this empty space now. So I feel like okay, well the Baraki are the narrowest canisters. So probably these we can fit some in. Yeah, like that, that fits in. Well, the Toamari, because the Toamari ones I actually really want to protect, because those are, no, they're not going to fit in. I think only the Baraki canisters, maybe the Paraka. Okay, yeah, the Paraka are going to fit in here as well. Um, can we squeeze in? Can we squeeze in? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, can we squeeze in these? Yeah, we can. We can't, we can't. We'll just need to really, really squeeze, really squeeze, 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 squeeze. Okay, okay, nice. So three canisters, a ton of other stuff, and this bag is full. Like, this bag is 100% full. So, we are gonna, actually, any, like, other, anything else I wanna throw in here? Weight-wise, I think we're doing fine on the weight. I probably could throw the magazines in and we'd be fine. Probably. If we're not fine on weight, then I'll take... Well, I'll put these magazines in my other suitcase. That's... Yeah, we'll leave that. I don't want to push it. I don't want to push my luck. Um, okay. So, we're gonna... Okay. Okay, see, this is not as bad as it was in Germany. In Germany, my bag wouldn't close. This... This means we can fit more. Oh, this, this is easily closing. This is closing with no problem at all. Okay, but I think that's, that suitcase is full. So now we've got a ton of Bionicle stuff that I just, I mean, this, this all has to be shipped then, right? Like this, I have to ship all of this, all these canisters, all these boxes. Okay, this is looking more reasonable to ship, like, now that everything else is packed. The magazine's fine, whatever, it's gonna be a crazy weight anyway. So I think I just need to ship these. Let's just try to, like, I'm gonna stack them just to get a good sense of dimensions, and that will probably give me a good idea on possibilities of shipment. Because in Germany, what I did is they did it by size of package and not weight, so if I'm like smart and efficient about size of package, we should, emphasis on should, be able to pack these all open. The annoying thing is like the boxes are pretty space consuming and they're also very hollow. Like a lot of the space in these boxes, so it almost feels like I'm wasting Okay, well that's all the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten big boxes. And then like a ton of canisters. I'm less worried, like if the canisters, if I need to, I'll like hand carry them. If I need to, ha like, I bet I could hand carry the canisters in like a backpack and be fine. Okay, maybe, like there's a lot of canisters, but I think I can figure something out with like the, like, the canisters I have left. The boxes, though, that is a problem. Because the boxes are really what's going to set me back in terms of space-wise, what do I actually have to ship? So let me just like try to stack these up and just get a good sense of, okay, can I, if I need to, ship stuff of this size in a box together? Like, What are the approximate dimensions of everything? fairly space optimized in terms of canisters, in terms of sets, and what we've got here. Okay, so let's see. 
okay, like this, I mean, that that's a big, like that's a big package. It might have to be two packages or like many packages. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to DHL, I guess, and figure out the biggest box they have. I'm going to measure the dimensions of this, and if this is bigger than the biggest box they have, I will take two. And uh, wish me luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes suitcase has been co-opted to hold more Lego. And of course, I got myself some room service because you can't pack on an empty stomach. So by the time I had basically finished packing what I could into my bags, it was really late at night. So I decided that the rest of it was a problem for the next day. And bright and early the next day, I got a chance to go swimming, which was really nice. I got to not worry about packing for a little bit and just relax in the pool. Of course, the massive haul of Bionicle sets and Ninjago stuff was weighing in the back of my mind, sinking me down deeper into the water. But, you know, I tried to enjoy it as much as I could. Had a really amazing lunch at a Singaporean Michelin-starred food market, which I've never heard Michelin stars and food market go in the same sentence before, but... They absolutely deserved it because they, they cooked like this was amazing. Probably some of the best food I had all trip was at this food market. So obviously I'll be putting out a Food Bricks video on this incredible place. Got some braised duck. Of course, because duck is amazing. But after that, it was then time to actually start figuring out the logistics of packing. But wouldn't you know it, right next to the food market, literally across the street, there was a mall with a couple Lego stores, specifically two destinations I had on my list. So I was like, okay, I know I already bought so much Lego yesterday and the day before, but given that I already got so many, why not just get some more? Because I mean, I do want to check out those locations anyway. So the first location I went to was Toys Hunt. Now Toys Hunt is a Lego specialty store in Singapore, which is a pretty interesting Lego themed store. It specifically is for Lego sets only. And this was located in Great World at Kim Seng Promenade. Now the most interesting thing to me about Toys Hunt was that they had a number of opened Lego sets, but with the bags only. So what happened was that Essentially, they removed the minifigures from sets and were selling little side builds of sets or maybe individual dinosaurs and whatnot as their own individual items, which I have never really seen before. Very interesting. Like, for instance, you can see a vehicle only for the Ninjago set back there. You've got all sorts of bags of just random accessories. And while most of the sets were a mix between old discontinued stuff and modern sets, they had a ton of collectible minifigures as well. A lot of this was just little bits and pieces of sets broken up into different components. Of course, they did have a crazy rare section, but I think at this point in the trip, I had like seen so many rare sets that I was desensitized to it. Like I walked past the UCS B-Wing and the Town Hall fully sealed, and I didn't even blink. I was just like, oh yeah, there's just some more random sealed discontinued Lego sets, just par for the course, I guess. But it was really interesting seeing just the kinds of items they had here, really just strange eclectic stuff. They had grab bags full of bulk Lego pieces. They had, of course, a whole batch of Star Wars CCBS sets, which were actually kind of tempting for me to get because I do love them as parts packs, but they were a little expensive. They were like 30 US dollars. So I was like, ah, you know what? As parts packs, I don't think I really need them because I can get them on Brickling used for a lot cheaper. But it was a really interesting store. I actually only ended up buying one thing from the store, which was a stuffed animal of the Duplo rabbit. I just thought that was adorable, so I had to get that. I think it came out around 2015. It's literally the Duplo rabbit logo, but as a stuffed animal. But honestly, I didn't really need to get anything else. And it was really interesting just going through the different modern sets. Like a lot of these were modern sets, some sets that literally just came out this year, but they were broken up into individual components. Like you have Aaron's mech only from the Lord and Aaron Ninja Team mechs in sealed bags without minifigures. You have just the side build for a LEGO Dream Set. And I found that really interesting. The way that they had actually structured products being sold at the store was kind of unlike anything I had witnessed, again, in the US, where they just had individual bags of items. There in the bottom of the shelf, you can see the aforementioned Duplo Rabbit stuffed animal. I was just kind of going around and looking through what they had available here, all sorts of unique things. Like here's just the Bone Mech from this year's Ninjago Core Lloyd versus Bone Mech set really interesting stuff just scattered around the store itself and I feel like I could have spent a lot more time at the store but I was honestly going around with my relatives so I didn't want to spend too much time and just take up their whole day just like staring at a Lego store so I was basically in and out 10 minute adventure literally just grabbed the Duplo rabbit and called it good. 
Of course, it was really cool to see a very large collection of random LEGO minifigures. Most of these were collectible minifigs, and they were around 20 Singaporean dollars each, which equates to around 15 US dollars, which... For some of the figures, I guess makes sense. For other figures, that felt really, really high, especially for like certain just standard figures. They were just priced really high, so I didn't really get any figures. There were definitely some figures here I didn't own already, but nothing I really desperately needed so much that I was willing to spend a lot more than Brickling prices to get. But it was still really cool to see just so many different figures being sold. This was right at the front of the store, right underneath the cashier desk, so it was cool to see just a very large array of figures, and that to me felt the most like a used Lego store in the US. Like, when you go to a used Lego store in the US, this is the kind of stuff that you would be used to seeing. But of course, this was not the only toy store in the particular Great World Mall. Toys Hunt was the only Lego focused store, but they also had a Toys R Us. And honestly, since Toys R Us has been closed in the US, I haven't gotten a chance to go to a Toys R Us in a long time. So I absolutely had to go and check out the Lego inventory they had for sale. That being said, honestly, there was really nothing of interest, to be completely honest. The coolest thing I saw there was like a big sculpture of the Hulk from Age of Ultron, but going into the Lego section, honestly, there wasn't really a ton to see. There were mostly just modern Lego sets. I think the oldest set that I saw was from the Lego Movie 2, if I remember correctly, so honestly, Nothing much, there was just cool displays, I thought it was really cool seeing the latest summer sets on a full display, like the arctic boat here as well as the ski slope and everything, so I did really like seeing the displays of Toys R Us, and it was just nice being in a Toys R Us again. They had a number of sets on sale, but those were basically the oldest sets they had, but otherwise, this was a fairly standard selection of LEGO, and there wasn't really anything that interesting. However, what was actually a little bit more interesting than this Toys R Us was a random gift shop that I discovered earlier in the mall where I was not even planning on going to this store. This was just literally a random gift shop. You can see the name of the storefront later in this video, but intermixed with just some random souvenirs, they had a ton of discontinued Lego sets. They had some Lego Movie 2 sets, like the bus over here, which is one of my favorite Lego Movie 2 sets, as well as the spa, which you can see right there. But the most interesting thing to me to actually find here was that underneath their shelves, they just had a random collection of sealed collectible minifigures basically selling at retail. And not only were they selling at retail, but they had actually removed them all from the bag so you know what you're getting. And this basically covered every single series from I would say circa 2016 to today. And it was really crazy just seeing these randomly underneath, like actually hidden. These were hidden underneath the modern Lego sets. Like as you can see right here, there's just a shelves and shelves of modern Lego sets but then underneath those shelves in nondescript cardboard boxes, there were just a ton of random Lego minifigure series. Like, look at this. Like, that was just so weird to me to see these tucked away because obviously these would be really rare and hard to find in the US nowadays, especially at pretty good prices. And if I didn't already own every single collectible minifigure, I probably honestly would have picked up some of them at this store because out of all of the collectible minifigures that I actually found at different used Lego stores, this had probably the best selection of all of them. But after touring around that mall, that last location was called Gifts Greetings, which is a very generic name for a store. It was then time to figure out how on earth I was going to get my extra Bionicle and Ninjago sets home. So I actually went to Singapore Post and basically just bought two of the largest boxes they had. Extra large Singapore Post boxes, I think they're around 20 US dollars each. And then came the struggle of actually packing the stuff. Okay, so I have now acquired two large boxes, and we're going to see what we can fit inside of these. Oh, it's okay. It's, I've got my phone set up there. Yeah. Oh, I probably need to get tape as well. I did not oh, really know. Tape. Maybe a hotel concierge. Yeah, oh, hotel concierge if they have tape. Yeah. 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 I think I think these will be a question is my one concern is that will the largest box fit inside this box here? So so far this is the largest one and oh okay. Oh, it is literally perfect. Oh. Yes. 
Okay, so we are going to put those in. That is very easy, fantastic. Okay, it, the dimensions are solid. That's what we would like to see. Hmm, okay, maybe I can, I'm gonna get some of my clothing here and just use it to pack some of, oh. I'm going to get some of my clothing here and use it to pad some of the boxes inside of this box because obviously we want the boxes to remain in good condition. So we are going to use this to kind of pad in some of the canisters and boxes themselves with just a extra padding. Okay, now, in theory, I might only be... Okay, nice. We might only need, so clearly one box and a little bit of another box is good, but I do want to take out some of the stuff I've already packed in my suitcases, um, just so I can be able to actually hold more stuff, should more stuff come. Okay. Okay, so we've gotten a lot of stuff in here. What I will do is I need to get tape and seal this up, but this is, okay, this is pretty much solid. Then we can take the next box here and see what we can do to fit in the rest. So we have another extra large box, which is fantastic. These were, I was honestly initially concerned these would not be enough space, but it looks like these are actually pretty solid. So, let's go ahead and see what else we can fit inside this box. I may actually want to take stuff out of my luggages at this point. Um, so this luggage here, I think this is all Lego. And I will actually, I'll leave the luggage that's all Lego, but I will take some boxes out of the luggage that has my clothes in it, because this I'll need to open during my cruise, which is coming up, and I would rather not have to keep shuffling around the Lego to do so. So, we're gonna pop this open here. Okay, yep. Yeah, this is, this is mostly filled with Lego as well. So the Lightning Dragon I actually do think I wanna hand carry because that is such a rare box. Not that the boxes will get damaged in here, um, but there is a concern about oh, some of the other boxes getting crushed. So what I will do is we'll take the Maxillos and Spinax, put that in here, and we'll get the snake crane. Also, oh, do they not fit together? Okay, well, that was worth a try. That did not quite fit exactly the way I thought it would. But the good thing is, I think this will be enough to still fit everything else. So, any more boxes? No, so I just have canisters left, uh, which is great because canisters are pretty easy to pack in and I'm less concerned about canisters getting damaged than boxes getting dented. So, we are going to put our canisters in here. Mm, it's a smaller canister. Yeah, we can put in one of the Paraka ones here. Pad it with a layer of clothing. Put in some more canisters. And I think that this should be pretty solid in terms of our way to pack everything. I'm feeling pretty good about how these are all packed. And that's fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna get some more clothes, put them into here just to add some extra padding up. And then we can just fill this to the brim with canisters to pack. Now, what I will do is that for some of the ones that are a little bit more fragile, I will hand carry them. And the ones that are just full on canister packaging, I will put in the box. So, I think, hmm. I think I can fit these in. Yeah. It's just like Tetris. Okay. 
fantastic. And then I can take the magazines, which add a lot of extra weight to my luggages, and just put them in here, and the magazines themselves kind of act as padding. Okay, I think, I think we're basically done with packing these. That fits in the box. I now have a lot of extra room in my own luggages, so I can maybe even buy more Lego. We'll have to wait and see. But so far, pretty much everything is packed, and that was a lot smoother than it was in Germany, so we are improving. <laughs> And with all those extra large boxes packaged up, it was then time to bring them over to the post office. I want to give a big thank you to my aunt and uncle for actually helping me package all of this. They essentially were going to be showing me around, like they were planning on just showing me around Singapore, but then I was like, hey, by the way, do we have like a couple hours to figure out how to pack and ship some Lego home? So they were very, very kind to actually help me out. This was literally the day before my friend Sarisa arrived, so I had to get this figured out before he came here because I did want to prioritize actually hanging out with him and going sightseeing rather than just spending all our time packing Lego. So my aunt and uncle were really helpful. Thank you so much for helping me. And then it was time to bring him over to the post office. Okay, so we have finally finished packing up both boxes. I do have a good number of sets that are in the luggages themselves, but I have freed up some space in my own luggage. And now it's time to ship out these two big boxes. So at this point in the video, comment down below, how much do you think this is gonna cost me to ship these two boxes XL size? Pretty heavy too, from Singapore to the US. I'm really hoping it's not gonna be that much, but we're about to find out. Let's go. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. I believe this sent me back nearly 250 to 300 US dollars to ship both of these home, which is high for shipping. Yes, that's a lot. It's not as much as I spent in Germany. I spent a lot more than that shipping less stuff home in Germany. So you know what? Silver lining. And I was honestly at this point just relieved to be done. I was so happy to have everything shipped. I was like, you know what? Whatever the cost, I'll pay it. Just get those home. That being said, it was the slowest way possible. They are currently traveling by boat over to the US and they should arrive by the end of October. So um, wish me luck and let's hope that boat doesn't sink or else that is $5,000 worth of Lego down the drain. Of course, because I'm crazy, I was contacted by Ninja Bricks on Instagram to check out the next location toy station in Serene Center. And I honestly did not know what to expect here but my expectations were blown out of the water because there were like a couple images on Google Maps of this and I was like, I can like maybe see a couple of retired sets, but I don't really know what to expect. Oh my goodness. They went hard with their selection. This, if this was in the US, this would be one of the wildest used Lego stores that I've ever been to. But given that this was in Singapore, this was only like the third craziest. Let's hear from Ninja Bricks in terms of what we actually can see inside this store. Hello, hello, I'm here with Marquez who is showing me around this particular toy store. Why don't you tell us more about this? Because this is amazing. So, um, well, I first heard about this store on Google in, back in 2019. So, yeah, I just came here and ever since then I've been, you, you know, coming here for like regular Lego shopping, etc. This is where I get most of my sets from. It is, okay. I mean, the selection here is absolutely amazing. We've got... Galaxy Squad, Ninja Turtles. I see some Ultra Agents in the back there. There's a Hero Factory display. Oh my goodness, like this is nuts. And there's actually, you're telling yeah, me there's, there's another part of this, yeah, right? Yeah, the other section got more. The other section has more. Well, I'm gonna figure out everything I need to get at this section first, but thank you so much for showing me around, man. Yeah, all right. Can we find you anywhere on social media? Anything you wanna plug? Um, my Insta, Lego do, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll link it in the description below. So go check them out. And YouTube channel that will be coming soon where I plan to do stop motions. Okay, well, send me the link to your channel. I'll put it in the description. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at what's inside this store. So here we are inside, what is this, Toy Station? Yes, it is. Okay, Toy Station Toy Store, which has a complete range of brand new Lego sets, but also a ton of retired stuff as well, just completely intermixed. Here we have some of the new, as of yet, unreleased uh, Star Wars September 1st sets from Ahsoka, but then right next to them, we've got some old sets, like we have back here, the Dark Side Invasion from DC Super Heroes in perfect condition, 118 Singaporean dollars, so that's around like 80, 90 US dollars, so honestly, not a bad price. The OG Man of Steel Superman Battle of Smallville set is here. Let's see, what else? Like the 2019 Batman set. And there's even more. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything there is to find here because I'm already seeing so many retired sets that I want to get my hands on. 
let's take a look at the absolute insanity of Toy Station. So obviously you can see a sealed Bionicle system set there from 2005. This was probably the coolest thing that I saw here. It definitely had a chance of having the pearl gold Carapos instead of flat dark gold, but there's literally no way to tell on the box, and since it was sealed, I really wanted to pick it up, but the price was really high even though it was sealed, so I decided not to, but who knows, it may actually have that pearl gold piece inside of it. But there were even just so many other strange different items, like sealed LEGO Star Wars keychains of builds, you of course had even just years and years worth of random LEGO keychain just stocked up here, which was so interesting to see here. I just thought this was just one of the most bizarre collections of random LEGO items in a single store. But keychains were just barely scratching the surface because this selection was nuts. Now, here's the unfortunate thing. A lot of the sets that were on display with price tags on these store windows were not actually for sale. What I was told is that if it was facing on the outside of the store, it is not for sale. If it's facing on the inside of the store, it is for sale. So no matter how hard I tried to buy one of the remote controlled racer sets and the Venator back there, they were like, you know what, those are for ourselves, those aren't for sale. Which completely understandable you want to actually maintain a cool looking storefront and have really rare items on the front of the store but just keep them for your own collection i get that so it was really cool i wish they were for sale but i think some of these are part of the owner's personal collection as well and that was what i was finding was very interesting about a lot of these stores there seems to be a lot of afols in singapore who use the stores as a way to kind of display their own personal collections and to also just sell other stuff they don't want at the same time so Obviously, there's a mix of different sets that they just had on display that were their sets, but they also had a ton of just random other sets as well, which was really interesting to be able to see. This was such a blast to explore. I really wanted to pick up those Razor sets, even though they had price tags, they were not for sale, which was so, so sad, but it was still really cool just to see a full-on collection of all sorts of different types of minifigures and sets on display here. Cool Chiba display, don't see that often, so that was really interesting. And they even had glass cases of different stuff, there were things dangling from the ceiling, and overall, while most of the LEGO sets they did have here were new and fully sealed and just brand new in general, it was still cool to see in a arrangement of random older lego sets as well and what was cool is that i actually came here in august before september and they actually had some of the brand new star wars ahsoka sets early so i did actually manage to pick up the t6 jedi shuttle because for whatever reason they had it cheaper than the us which i did not expect whatsoever to find brand new sets early cheaper than what they would be us but of course, on the front of the store, you can see a crazy collection of sealed LEGO sets, which were part of their own collection. These were not for sale, except the Belleville set. I managed to convince them to sell me the Belleville set. So even though that one was on display, I was like, do you really want this Belleville set? I was like, do you really need to keep it? And they were like, all right, fine, you can, you can buy the Belleville set. So <laughs> shout out to the store owners for letting me buy that, I guess from their own personal collection. But what I managed to get here was actually a ton of different unique items. I got the Belleville set. I got a Castle Trolls or Dwarves Battle Pack, which is probably one of the rarest items I got on this list. It's worth like $400 sealed on Bricklink, and I paid like 80 to 90 for it, so that was a really great deal. I also got one of the Ninjago Lloyd Golden Dragon Swords from 2013. Absolutely harassed my friend Teresa with that on the cruise ship. That was just so much fun to just throw at each other on the ship. And I also managed to get a couple of other unique LEGO items. This was probably one of the coolest items they had, which was a set of railroad tracks, which I literally tried to beg them to sell me it, but they wouldn't sell it because one of the tracks was cracked and they didn't want to sell anything damaged. I told them I didn't care and just wanted the box, but they were like, no, we, we don't want to sell anything cr damaged or broken. So I guess that makes sense, but still really sad because they just had it kind of tucked away in a trash pile and they were like, we're not going to sell it because it's broken. That was still so cool to see. And again, major shout out to Ninja Bricks for actually coming up and showing me this store. Scheduling was a little bit difficult to fit it into my schedule, but thank you so, so much to Ninja Bricks for pulling up and even having some sets for me to sign, which was super, super cool. So big shout out to Ninja Bricks and definitely go check him out on Instagram and YouTube as well. So that was so cool actually meeting a fan in Singapore and being able to just talk Lego stuff and explore the store together so that was so so much fun and of course this was one of the best experiences I had going around Singapore and just witnessing the amazing things I had available.
All right, let's take a look at my haul from this latest used LEGO store. So the first thing that I bought was this LEGO Ninjago Golden Dragon Sword. I think it is so weird and interesting how they made one based around Ninjago the final battle in 2013. It's basically like a standard Ninjago katana, except it has the Lloyd's Golden Dragon head sculpt on it. I just thought it was really interesting, and for nine Singaporean dollars, which is roughly, I would say, six or seven US dollars, this was an absolute steal. The next one that I got, speaking of absolute steals, was this castle battle pack a dwarves battle pack still fully sealed which is so so cool i didn't own this one yet so it is really exciting to have i'm still debating as to whether or not i will keep it or maybe just get the minifigures used and then maybe sell this one because it is fully sealed and i would feel bad about breaking the seal because i know that people care about sealed stuff a lot more than i do so I'm kind of on the fence, but it was for a pretty good price, so I'm really happy to be able to get this one, which is a really cool LEGO Castle 2008 Fantasy Era Battle Pack. Now, moving onwards, I'm going to be honest, I probably should have looked up the prices of these before getting them. I paid 35 Singaporean dollars for these, so that's around 25 US dollars. And yeah, I checked Bricklink in the car ride, and these are selling for $10 sealed on Bricklink, so... I overpaid on each of these by about 15 bucks, which is a little unfortunate, but honestly, compared to everything else in this haul, it's not that bad, and I feel like you win some, you lose some. These were the only two LEGO Movie minifigures that I was missing, aside from the Comic-Con Unikitty from 2014. Essentially, when I bought the LEGO Movie game, I chose to get one of the pre-order minifigures. I think they had three choices, and I chose whichever one was not these two, so... Finally happy to add these to my collection, especially Pajamas Emmett, because this is something I've been wanting for a while, because it is a pretty iconic outfit that he wore in the movie. Moving onwards, I got a ton of these Lego Germany exclusive minifigure series packs, fully sealed. These are so cool, and since they're German exclusives, you can't really get them anywhere in the US. They're really rare, and they had them fully sealed for, I think, around 10 Singaporean dollars each, which is a little higher than Bricklink, but factoring in shipping, it was a bit of a wash, so I figured, you know what, why not? Also from this store, I was able to get a sealed LEGO Belleville set. I probably will have my Duckworks team member, Bertie, uh, review this one because it is a really interesting sealed set to get for Belleville. I honestly don't own really any Belleville sets, so I really wanted to pick this one up just to experience what it was like to put this together. Really excited to build this one, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Lastly, I was able to get from one of the other stores... Just this little Duplo rabbit stuffed animal. I'm gonna open this up right now, actually. It was only six Singaporean dollars and 90 cents, so really good price for this. This came out in, I believe, 2015, and it is just an adorable stuffed animal mascot of the Lego Duplo logo. I think it is so cute, and I'm happy to add this one to my collection. Just look at that, it's so cute. Lastly, for whatever reason, they had a Soka's t sec shuttle for a really good price. This was cheaper than it would be for me in the US by around $10, so I figured, you know what, why not? At the time I'm recording this, it is not even September 1st yet, so they had this one a little bit early, and I was really happy to be able to pick this up. I could not wait to build it. It's really funny because Ahsoka Episode 2 came out yesterday, and I was literally watching it right before going to the store, saw the T6 shuttle, and I just had to get it after that amazing space fight scene in it. So, wanted to really pick this one up. It's a little bit mixed. I, I think my, my feelings on this are mixed. I may or may not do a full review, we'll have to see, but... I don't like how the underside of the wings don't have the same detail that the other side have. They're supposed to be patterned on the same way. It's interesting. I do like swooshing it around. Like, this is so much fun to just fly around. So it is really cool. How I'm going to pack this, I have no idea. Because I don't have saran wrap. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see how I'm actually going to bring this home. But I might just throw it in my hand carry and hope for the best. And that is about it from this latest store. Honestly, a bit of a smaller haul than usual. Altogether, I believe I spent around 300 US dollars because... A ton of minifigs, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, as well as the Belleville set for 90 Singaporean dollars. So that was like 65 US dollars. This was around 90 Singaporean as well. This one, 35 each. So altogether, it was actually pretty expensive, but for the most part, I think I got a pretty okay deal for all this stuff. Is it as good of a deal as some of the other stuff that I got in this haul? Definitely not, but it was still a really good store, and I'm really glad I checked it out. But of course... This was not the last location we went to. I think this has got to be location number, like, what, six or seven that we've gone to so far? And that was not all. Because after that, I had an amazing dinner at the Singapore Country Club, which was really cool to witness at night, seeing some live music be played and seeing the pool fully illuminated. Got a lot of amazing pictures of my Ninjago minifigures here. It was time bright and early the next day to be able to actually go around 
and explore some more LEGO stores that I still didn't manage to hit yet. And so, the next day after having a delicious meal at Marina Bay Sands at their Blossom restaurant, I got a chance to go out and explore Singapore for a little bit right before heading over to my next destination. Now, throughout Singapore, there are these stores called Toy Outposts, and Toy Outposts are basically these stores where anybody can go in and sell any sort of items they want. They're kind of just used secondhand stores for all sorts of toys, not just Lego, but I do have a lot of strong memories of the last time I went to Singapore of them having some pretty interesting items, so I definitely wanted to check them out. Unfortunately, the one at Vivo City no longer exists, and we're getting there, but I just wanted to give a bit of a heads up. Initially on my list, I wanted to hit up both Toy Outpost locations, Vivo City and Plaza Singapura, so I started with Plaza Singapura, and thankfully, a Toy Outpost did exist there. Also at Plaza Singapura was an official LEGO specialty store. This is basically the same thing as a LEGO brand retail store, except in countries where LEGO doesn't really have a strong presence, so they basically outsource the stores to specialty stores, which you can see right here, and it was really cool to be able to see the Singapore exclusive LEGO set being sold there, celebrating 50 years of some, some anniversary in Singapore itself. And what was really interesting was that the official LEGO store itself had a selection for used LEGO minifigures, which obviously was very strange to see at an official LEGO store. Of course, Toy Outpost at Plaza Singapura was a lot more interesting in terms of the selection of random used LEGO minifigs they had. The prices were honestly not great, they were actually pretty badly priced, but it was still really cool to be able to see all these minifigures. I want to give a major shout out to Ransom Fern, who actually met up with me here and we basically went around the entire day together, went LEGO shopping, and then stopped for literally 5 hours and had a massive conversation all about LEGO, about mock building and everything. If you don't know who Ransom Fern is, maybe this image will jog your memory. Yes, he's the guy that made this, which is the reimagined version of the Hulkbuster, but not only that, Ransom Fern has actually made a ton of other types of LEGO mocks, from Ninjago rebuilds to all sorts of unique LEGO pieces, so definitely go follow Ransom Fern, definitely check him out. Very, very impressive builder. I mean, oh my goodness, I am outclassed in every possible way by Ransom Fern. It's just so, so stunning how skilled he is at building, and it was so interesting being able to literally just sit down with him for hours and just pick his brains on his building techniques and what he uses to come up with ideas and just what we thought about the state of LEGO. It was so cool, really great to make a friend in Singapore, and we definitely need to catch up the next time I'm in town, and stay tuned because we might maybe do a podcast together at some point as well, so we definitely have a lot more to talk about. Of course, here's the rest of the footage we took at Toy Outpost. Again, didn't really find anything of extreme interest to me because I already owned most of the minifigures and the prices were okay, like not, not awful, not good either, depending on the minifigures, some were better than others, but it was still cool to see even more sealed vintage LEGO sets, which again were just kind of, you know, every LEGO store seemed to have some random crazy sealed vintage sets, so it wasn't that interesting at that point. But then we moved on to Vivo City Mall, and at Vivo City we got a chance to check out Toys R Us, which was I believe the flagship Toys R Us store in Singapore. Really cool to see these massive Lego displays like the Ninjago Dragons Rising display. There was a gigantic sculpture of the Merlion, which is an icon of Singapore, and it was really cool seeing a full assortment of all sorts of different Lego sets, the perfect Lego toy for every age. Now, I think the rarest thing we found at this random Toys R Us was a selection of the 2018 LEGO Unikitty sets, still fully sealed. Very weird to see that. Also cool to see all sorts of display canisters for dreams and whatnot, which we don't normally see here in the US, these types of LEGO store displays, so it was really cool to see all sorts of stuff like that. There's that Merlion statue, which was very interesting to see, certainly unique to this location. And of course, I had to get a Toys R Us branded water bottle of all things to keep me sustained as we explored around. But then came the fun part, because first of all, we went on a crazy hunt looking for Toy Outpost in Vivo City, which after hunting for like 10 minutes, we realized had closed down and doesn't exist anymore. Despite Google Maps saying it is still open and active, that is a lie. It does not exist anymore and has been replaced by another store. But the hardest thing to find was their official LEGO certified store. And I kid you not, we spent upwards of 25 to 30 minutes just looking for the store. Now you might imagine, why didn't you just go look at a directory? First of all, all the directories in this mall did not work. Like, they were all broken. We wandered around, nobody seemed to know where it was. As it turns out, you had to go, like, outside, around the side of the mall. There was an internal, like, kids' play area. 
and then you can find it, but let's just see our initial reaction of actually finding this place after hunting for it for 30 minutes. Come on, come on. Wait, bro, where is it? No, no. Oh, no, 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 wait, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> we did it! As we walked away from the Lego store, we saw the store that was dedicated to literally making Lego style mosaics, like that was the entire store, so that was really interesting to see. But then, the next destination was Clarky, which allegedly had a store called My Little Brick Shop. And I'm gonna be honest, we spent another hour trying to find it? No dice. Google Maps says it's open. I am convinced this place doesn't exist. Let's see our reaction to that. Mailbox, office. This way to shop. What the hell? Oh, this way to shops. Okay, well, hold yes. up. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> it's just going to point us to a lift or that's Guaranteed, the right? Downstairs. Like, Door is locked. Uh, from 11 to p.m. to 6 a.m., so it's open. Yeah, no, it's just enough. I am not seeing my little brick shop on this directory at all. Not under hobbies. Uh, this, this isn't it, right? Yeah, Faris, nope. Not under services. I'm gonna imagine that this doesn't exist anymore. As a silver lining, there was a random luggage store called The Bold Stories that happened to sell Lego Ninjago merch. No idea how that happened, but again, you can see some really cool and strange items here. As you can see, they pretty much had Ninjago products from all around different eras of Ninjago. There was a Ninjago Legacy case from 2019, which was really cool to see some of the old artwork that I believe originated in 2011 being showcased here. I even had to check the tag to see when this came out because it looked like it came out in 2011. You also have a Skybound one in the back there of the Ninja in their Skybound and Day of the Departed outfits. So that was probably released around 2016 or 2017, depending on when they put these out. And overall, just cool to see an accessory-focused LEGO store. Probably the most interesting thing at this store was actually seeing the artwork for Digi Zane on the Prime Empire stuff, complete with dual molded arms and arm printing. I think the rumor is all of the ninja were supposed to have arm printing in their initial prototypes for Prime Empire, so that's why this one was made and they never actually made it into a figure, but it was cool seeing it on merch. But overall, it was then time to wrap up. This was basically the final large Lego store destination I went to. So after an amazing long conversation with Ransom Fern, I had a chance to enjoy some Korean barbecue at night. And then my friend Sarisa arrived and we were off to the races. Of course, we didn't really do that many Lego related things, but on one of our trips to Universal Studios Singapore, we got a chance to check out what was probably the coolest Lego official certified store that I found in Singapore, which is this one right here. This is the one located on Sentosa Island, which is specifically in Singapore itself. This is a gigantic I love Singapore sign, fully brick built, and I really now want that lion dance minifigure in costume as an actual figure. That would be really cool to see. So Sarisa and I, of course, had to check out this store, and the displays inside were actually really cool, including a full-on working city to scale of the island of Sentosa, featuring all sorts of unique details and even an underwater section, which was so much fun. Now admittedly, we were on a pretty tight timetable because we wanted to see both the Singapore Zoo and Universal Studios in the same day, as well as go clubbing for a bit and go to an escape room, so we had a lot of very crazy plans for this day, but I managed to get a bit of footage inside the LEGO store. This diorama was really cool because it literally was based off of the island that we were on for Universal Studios and for Singapore, so this was so much fun, and the underwater section of this mock was just so cool. I loved seeing the mix of sets alongside a bunch of really inventive and creative mocks being showcased inside this display as well, and they even hid different LEGO minifigures around the display that you had to search and find, so that was just so much fun, and it was really cool seeing all sorts of different LEGO themes being blended together into one massive display. From Duplo to LEGO Friends to Disney to Monkey Kid to Ninjago to City, this was so so cool, and I think my favorite build there was this large scale hermit crab build, using very inventively the LEGO hot air balloon pieces as its shells. Of course, there were more things to see inside this store as well. This was probably the closest to a full-on flagship store that we were able to get a chance to explore and look at, so very cool seeing the full selection of LEGO sets. Didn't buy anything because I honestly had nothing to buy. Basically, everything was just what you would normally see in a standard LEGO store, maybe with an albeit even bigger selection, but for the most part, it was just fairly standard in terms of the selection. But it was still really cool to see all the different giant displays they had on display at this store, 
And with that, we have finally come to the end of this massive journey, going through Singapore, finding some of the most insane LEGO stores that I've ever been to in my life. This has probably been one of the longest, if not the longest, travel videos ever made, and hopefully this gives you an idea as to why I needed to break this up into four videos, because imagine if we also had the other stuff in this video as well, we'd be here for like four hours. So I hope you enjoyed this insane adventure, and again, comment down below if you have been to any of these locations, I would love to hear it, because I had a blast, and this was just so much fun. Okay, and with that, we have summed up my insane Lego shopping experience in Singapore. Of course, there is one more video coming out about that amazing Bionicle dream in real life, walking into the store and seeing rows and rows of sealed Bionicle sets, which again, will come out at some point. The tracking says it should definitely arrive by November. They're, they're not here yet, so I'm, I'm a little nervous, but you know what? I will keep waiting and that video will come out whenever I get the sets that I ship to me. But of course, I hope you enjoyed this video going through my insane adventure shopping in Singapore. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And if there are any Singaporeans in the comments, comment down below. What is your favorite store out of all these locations? And did I miss anything on top of this? Because honestly, knowing me, I'm sure I did. And now I'm going to have to go back. Thanks all for tuning in and bye for now.